Originally, this was just going to be a cute little request video where I draw some of your comments for the 5k celebration. Thanks, by the way. But now we are close to 6k, and although I thought that all of this wasn't going to be a Star Cannon, well, here I stand with all the Pokemon except maybe one being incredibly canon to a Star. -er. So I guess here we go with a bunch of designs that are now incredibly canon to the Astara region. And of course, thank you all so much for the support so far. I did not expect the Team Fortress vid to do so much with the numbers and push me over the 5k. You know, TF2 just never dies. So without any further ado, let's begin with the requests. Let's start with a Beast Paradox form. Really cool that y'all seem to love Beast Paradox forms as many of them were requests for that. Our first request comes from Pretty Yuki the Artist, who asked for a Beast Paradox form of Smeargle, based on cavemen and cave paintings, which I thought was a really cool idea. I had the idea in my head almost straight away this massive lumbering doofus of a Smeargle carrying around a stone tablet, like some kind of prophet. Grafiae was a big inspo for this one, as it shares a similar idea that its spit mixes with the food it eats to make paint-like substances, that it goops its hand with to paint. Smeagol was a really cool idea for this, as the beret-like head becomes instead a thick caveman brow. Kind of stereotypical, but I think that helps a lot to show how primitive it is. I didn't know whether or not to have a full bunch of paintings or smears on the stone tablet, but didn't want to distract too much from the main figure, seeing as a massive stone tablet already sticks out a lot. I can totally see this thing using its giant stone tablet to smash enemies in its physical attacking animation. Smeagol, Beast Paradox form, the cave painting Pokemon, a poison and rock type. The innate weakness of Smeagol was completely bred out of this Pokemon in Ultra Space. The berries they found had strange effects on this form. Due to the toxicity and calories of the berries, Smeagol became dull and massive, but also the chewed up berries made their spit coloured and toxic, which they would then smear on their hands. Smeagol carry around large stone slabs with their long powerful tail on which to paint on. When finished, they use them as shields and bludgeons smeared with toxic spit against grass and fairy predators of Ultra Space. This form of Smeagol has a new ability called Stone Shield, which raises this Pokemon's defense but lowers their speed. After taking a super effective physical attack or crit, the attack is nullified as well as this ability. Really weird that I've never heard the word siphonophore before taking a trip down Google Lane. I thought it was some kind of gramophone for the new age, but no, it's these things. And you know what's also one of these strange gramophones? The Blue Bottle. If you don't know, the Blue Bottle is kind of a beach staple around where I live. Every time I go to the beach, I'd find them washed up on the beach looking like a sad little alien. No touchy though. These creatures are venomous. They are closely related to jellyfish, which also love to do the classic wash up on the shores routine. I guess that's all you can do when you're forced to follow the ways. That's deep, man. Anyway, there were two comments about these siphonophores, one by Lollipop Taco 7523 who asked for a Nihiligo Beast Paradox, and one by Galaxy Gato 9642 who asked for many Beast Paradoxes, but Gastrodon is one of these, so to try and make an in-between, because we do already have a Beast Paradox Gastrodon, and the Ultra Beasts are already technically Beast Paradoxes, I decided instead to make a bit of a change to the plan, and I hope that's okay, to make an Astara and regional form for Nihilego, much like Buzzwall and Kartana. Instead of it looking like Lily or vice versa, this one has sort of a more alien and predator look to it, with the brim hat becoming more like a mohawk and ponytail combo. A simple change to the formula, but with colours being full blue, I think it's pretty effective It's still looking like an unsettling creature from the depths. Nihiligo, the parasite Pokemon, a water and poison type. Whether or not this form of Nihiligo is the original is up for debate, but none can attest to the danger this Pokemon presents. Within Nihiligo's tendrils are thousands of sharp hollow needles that upon contact with something will inject a deadly toxin that quickly takes effect, leading to horrible pain and much worse. It struggles to survive out of water, leading to many washing up on the beaches of Ozside City, touching one is strongly advised against unless you know what you are doing. This form is squishier than its UB form, able to take physical blows better. This form of Nihilego has the ability Poison Touch. Next, Ultimate Ditto 4380 asks for my take on Meese. 
Australia doesn't have Moose, so this is the only Pokemon I'm still on the fence about. Opening the border to allow into a Staro. Maybe we should have some kind of idle competition and vote on whether Camus should come into a Staro? Comment your thoughts about what your verdict is after the video. I looked through the wildly unsettling different Moose pictures to get inspiration, and I saw that despite their massive size, it's kinda cute that they have some decent camouflage. And so I wanted to make a Grass-type Moose, Generally, the idea was this Pokemon's horns would instead be a flytrap-like device that would allow it to snap down on predators attacking, while also trying to just be intimidating. I wanted this Pokemon to look a little bit understated apart from the massive antler trap things, and look, it even has a little black. In the end, I did change the face a little bit to fit more with the mooseness, raising the eyes and lowering the nose, and thickening the legs a bit helped make it a little more whatever this aesthetic is. Camus the Camo Pokemon, a grass type. Camus spend much of their time in thick jungles so that they may best use their ability to blend in. Camus's horns are made of plant matter, similar to that of a carnivine, and it will use it to snap at and crush enemies that try to attack. Many people underestimate the size of Camus and find themselves being trampled by the sheer size and weight of the Pokemon. Whole cars are tipped easily by the rampage of a Camus. When seen in the wild without drawing their ire, Camus are quite calm and can be seen peacefully chewing on trees and bushes. Camus has a new ability called Camouflage, which raises the use of stats depending on the terrain set up. With the Astar and Baby Pokemon video just around the corner, well, Astar and forms of Baby Pokemon, Lurkitten requested more Baby Pokemon, and I thought it'd be fun to do a Baby form for a Pokemon we haven't seen in quite a while since almost one of the first couple of videos, Cargoon. A steel-type hammer Pokemon based on old rubber hose cartoons and those hammer enemies from Kingdom Hearts. For the baby form, however, I wanted to explore something a little different, in the fact that it's a baby and instead of it being an old-timey cartoon, it's a kid's cartoon, with it being more like one of those squeaky Pico hammers, the kind of baby hammers that kids would use when they're helping their mummy and daddy to do hard labour. Softer, rounder, and brighter is the aesthetic baby Pokemon have, like, you just want to protect them and help them evolve, so I wanted Squeakery to emulate almost like a baby bird mixed with a hammer, and Muppet all at once. In-game it would wobble its head from side to side and make little squeaky noises for its cry. Squeakery, the novelty Pokemon, a normal type. Bright and cheerful, Squeakery loved to help people just like their evolution Cargoon. Squeakery, however, can't do the same heavy abilities Cargoon can. Their noses can't hammer and make Squeakery do an adorable squeaking noise when pressed in. This isn't painful to them, but some may get quite agitated when it can't do damage to an opponent. Squeakery are a little skittish of new people and will choose to stick close to their trainers at all times. Some trainers, to help train a Squeakery, will buy specialized hammer practice toys so they are as powerful as they can be once they evolve. Squeakery's ability is rattled. Another from Galaxy Gato 9642 and PokeKid Zero is Beast Paradox Meteor. And this one is such a fun idea, but I feel like if we are going Beast Paradox for a Pokemon like this, it needs two forms as well. So to rectify this, we're going to go into Galactic. The first form of Beast Paradox Meteor is going to be a whole planet. Not planet size, but still massive, and although it doesn't harbor life on it, it's still very earthy looking with the island shapes making the eyes and mouth as well as hands sort of clasping itself. Even when I finished with the design, the initial look was a little too weird and didn't sell Minior very well, as well as looking a bit skull-like, which was strange. Little asteroids around it would have glowing cores that would pop out tiny Minior eyes, and that ring around it constantly spinning at a leisurely pace. It wasn't too interesting as just the Earth, so I added some little islands shaped like the patterns on base Minior to give it some extra detail, looking like warped fingers as well, and then added some eyes to the actual planet. I know a lot of Ultra Beasts lack eyes, but Beast Paradoxes thrive when their eyes are showing they're bright and menacing. Funnily enough, this isn't the last large asteroid-like Pokemon with psychic powers we'll see in Astara, but our dear friend Minior has a powerful other form. Minior, Beast Paradox form, the planetoid Pokemon, a ground and psychic type. A strange occurrence in Ultra Space is this form of Minior. While looking like an actual planet, this seems to just be an earthen shell with the true form of Minior slowly absorbing energy within. 
This energy comes out in the form of glowing energy rings and various mini asteroids floating around Minior that act as eyes for it to detect foes. During battle it launches these asteroids at foes with deadly force and if that doesn't work, it will crush them with a full force tackle. Once the shell breaks, the true form of Minior emerges. This form of Minior has a new ability called Unstable Core, where upon reaching half HP, this Pokemon explodes unleashing a psychic type Nova, damaging all Pokemon and then changing forms. As this form of Minior reaches critical mass, it explodes and becomes a raging black hole. I love Minior, but it's kind of weak, so I wanted to make this beast form as terrifying as possible, while also looking so silly. The idea for this one was get regular Minior and turn it into this stretched out, wildly violent, spinning, portal looking version of itself. Even though it's a raging force of destruction, now it still has that cute, silly little Minior face it had before. Even the colours are the same, this is where the other colours of Minior would come in, with each of the forms showing up here as different colour black holes. And then we come to the problem. While it was late at night, I came back to this design and looked and it looked like something very, very wrong. That's something I don't want to promote. So to change the silhouette to something much less horrible, adding in extra space to the insides of the vortex, which also helped give the eyes something to rest on, it also helped reinforce the whimsy cataclysm that it represents. Minior, Beast Paradox, Black Hole Form, the Planetoid Pokemon, a dark and psychic type. Once the shell is destroyed, Minior's darker form is revealed, an all-encompassing black hole sucking in anything and everything around it. Minior loses energy quickly in this form and will faint fast, but it will absorb the energy to try and keep its reserves of energy up. If it can absorb enough earth around it, Minior can return back to its shelled form. Only a few of these Pokemon have been recorded so far and must be caught before changing to this form. Extreme caution required, 5 star threat. Minior in this form has a new ability called Black Hole, where this Pokemon damages every Pokemon on the battlefield's HP, removes terrain and removes stat ups and status effects each turn. This also includes Minior itself in the HP drain. To round out the video with something beautiful, here's a request from Uchiha no Taisho Saravi, who requested on Milotic and Lapras Fusion, which are two Pokemon that I feel would make a very good fusion. I wanted to give it the body types of both, being sort of a four-finned Pokemon, while also having a serpentine body. The opportunity to have Lapras's head with the long horn of Milotic and the fin ear thing, combined with Lapras's swirly ears, made for a really fun combo. The end result of this coming out to almost a blue glaucus looking creature. While I was working on this, I didn't really notice Milotic's awesome pattern on their tails, which I've never really appreciated. So I went full on with the fusion having that as this almost overcoat on the creature. For colours I kept the pattern the same, but for the head I used the yellow underside of Lapras, with this pink colour from the ears of Milotic, mainly because it felt really fitting for the design. Alright, you know what, as much as I love this, this is something I'd see in Power World, and I don't know if I should be proud of that or not. Malapras, the water ruler Pokemon, a water and fairy type. Malapras are rarely seen Pokemon that call lakes their home. This has led many to see it as nothing more than a myth, but this Pokemon appears to those who require aid. It has a long body with segments of hard shell which people will sit on and hang on to while being ferried about by Melapras. It will be exceptionally careful as to not go under the water if you are riding it. The horn and feelers on its head can detect and calm emotions and will use this to pacify aggressors. This Pokemon does have a violent side though as well, willing to drag enemies under the surface. Melapras has a new ability called Water Scale. This absorbs water type attacks, increasing defense and curing status ailments when hit with water type attacks. Obviously there were so many requests, like 30 of them, and I did what I could, but it was fun. And some of the comments here have already been turned into Pokemon or are waiting for their videos to be created. So I hope when they come out you look back and go, well that's why you never did mine. Thanks so much for the support and what did you think of the video? Comment your thoughts as well as like and subscribe. Because this ended up being technically an Astara video, in the next video I'm going to do some Pokemon who only have regional evolutions, see their regular forms get evolutions. This is kind of a request from before as well. So thanks so much for watching and see you next time.
is so silly. This is so silly. This is so silly.